Throughout the years, we have had our favorites when it comes to grocery stores. Some of this loyalty may have been passed down from parents that often took you shopping with them. You may even remember the sights and smells from those trips, which bring back great memories from the past. This video revisits some of my older videos, compiling them into a longer, more comprehensive presentation. So please enjoy this compilation of forgotten and defunct grocery stores that were such a big part of our lives. Believe it or not, Kohl's was a grocery store before it was a department store. Maxwell Cole opened the first Kohl's food store in 1946 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The 1950s saw rapid growth, and they also introduced the arched roof design that Kohl's became known for. By the early 1960s, Maxwell Cole had built the company into the largest chain of grocery stores in the Milwaukee area. And in 1962, Cole decided to try his hand at a department store, which opened in Brookfield, Wisconsin. The department stores, which are very familiar today, would end up outlasting their grocery stores, with A&P buying the grocery division in 1982, and eventually closing the stores for good in 2003. Colonial Stores was for much of the 20th century one of the nation's largest supermarket chains. At its peak, the company had over 500 stores and operated in 11 states, from Florida to Maryland. David Pender founded the company in 1901 by opening his first grocery store in Norfolk, Virginia. The Colonial name would come in the mid-1940s following the merger of Big Star and Little Star grocery stores. The company introduced their popular CS Rooster logo in 1947 as they were busy converting all of their stores into self-service. By the 1960s, they had returned to the Big Star name as a large discount operation, and by the 1970s, most of the colonial outlets were either closed or converted over to Big Star. Big Star would survive until the early 1990s when they too closed for good. Rediscover your past by digitizing your family's memories with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about preserving your legacy, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection. Mars Supermarkets were a family-owned fixture in the Baltimore, Maryland area that began in the mid-1940s. Joseph Deanna named his supermarket after a nearby airplane that could take off and land on water, called the Mars Flying Boat, which was developed by Glenn Martin. Joe ended up selling his shares of the business to his two younger brothers, and they would run it for over 50 years. At the peak, there were 13 stores around Maryland, which were maintained up until 2016. At that time, Mars sold five of its stores to Wise Markets, and decided to close the remaining locations. Cost-cutting measures were tried, but in the end, Mars couldn't compete with the likes of Wegmans and Harris Teeter. In 1917, Albert and Hugh Girard opened the first Alpha Beta store in Pomona, California. The name was in reference to how the shelves were stocked, alphabetically, by product. Signs featuring the chain's smiling cowboy mascot, Alfie, became a common sight throughout California. By 1961, there were more than 100 stores. The company was then bought by American Stores in 1961 with Skaggs Drug Centers buying American stores in 1979. The combined food and drug stores in Alpha Beta territory were rebranded as Skaggs Alpha Beta. Later in the 1980s, the company bought out the Jewel Companies, which owned Osco Drug, and some stores became Jewel Oscos. By 1994, the company merged with the Ralph's chain, and the Alpha Beta name disappeared altogether. Jitney Jungle was a chain that began in Jackson, Mississippi in 1919. The name Jitney comes from a slang term for a nickel, and initially it was called Jitney Jingle, but a local newspaper made a mistake and published an ad that called it Jitney Jungle, and the name stuck. The store was one of the first to offer the cash and carry model, rivaling Piggly Wiggly for the concept. Jitney Jungle would actually win a lawsuit that made its way to the Supreme Court, and proved that Piggly Wiggly had not invented the idea of self-service. 
Jitney Jungle continued to grow, spreading to neighboring states and building a chain of more than 100 stores. At one time, it was the largest privately held grocery store chain in the United States. In the mid-1990s, the family would sell the company for $400 million, and by the end of the decade, it had become a debt-ridden company. Eventually, it was bought out by Winn-Dixie, and the remaining stores were rebranded. Bruno's was founded in 1932 by Joe Bruno in Birmingham, Alabama. He opened an 800-square-foot corner grocery that grew slowly at first, but eventually it would launch a line of discount stores called Food World during the 1970s. By the early 1990s, Bruno's was one of the top 40 grocery chains in the United States, with more than 200 stores across the South. The chain suffered a tragic loss in 1991, when a plane crash killed their top executives and members of the Bruno family. The chain was then sold off, and it lost the personal touch that had kept it thriving. Stores began to close, and the company was shuffled around through buyouts. Bruno's supermarkets held out until 2009. That's when the company dissolved, and what was left became Bell Foods. The Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, better known as A&P, was started in 1859 by George Gilman. Although prepackaged tea was how it all started, A&P spread across the country with nearly 200 stores and a thriving mail-order business by the turn of the century. They were different and offered no frills, which meant lower prices. This led to an explosion of stores, and by 1930, there were 16,000 of them. A&P was America's largest grocer, but they primarily focused on urban cities. As Americans made their way out into the suburbs, A&P began its decline. By the end of the 1970s, there were roughly 1,500 stores remaining. By the 1980s, the company was profitable again, but just barely. By the early 2000s, they were back in the red, and bankruptcy was looming. And after 156 years, the final A&P closed in 2016. Born in Sicily, Dominic Di Matteo founded the Dominic's grocery chain in Chicago, Illinois in 1918. His second location opened up in 1934. By 1950, the Di Matteos were opening a 14,000 square foot supermarket and would reach 19 locations before they sold to Fisher Foods in 1968. The Di Matteo family wasn't out of the picture, and they continued to operate the stores with the backing of Fisher. Under Fisher, Dominic's grew to 45 locations, but the family wasn't happy with the agreement, so they bought it back for $100 million. The 1980s was spent experimenting with in-store pharmacies, cafes, and photo developing. By the early 1990s, Dominic Di Matteo Jr. had died and left the business to his kids, who did not have the same passion for the business. By 1998, Safeway owned the 116 Dominic's locations, and they would all but disappear over the next 15 years, officially closing in 2013. Dell Champs began in Mobile, Alabama in 1921, and was started by Alfred Dell Champs. By 1928, he was opening the largest supermarket in Alabama, and shortly after that, his company began to spread into Florida and surrounding states. Over 100 locations would eventually open, and by the 1980s, Dell Champs was experimenting with superstore concepts that were open 24 hours. In 1997, the chain of stores was purchased by Jitney Jungle, and two years later, they entered bankruptcy. By 2000, all locations with the Dell Champs name were closed. In 1961, a former Winn-Dixie executive named Frank Outlaw bought four grocery stores in Greenville, South Carolina that he renamed Buy Low after he held a naming contest for the company. Outlaw's secretary came up with the name and the stores began to open across Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Buy Low became known for the bull statues that sat atop its stores. In 1977, Bylow was sold to a Dutch food company and began merging other chains into the Bylow brand. They held onto the company for over 30 years before they sold it in 2005. The chain struggled over the course of the next 10 years, 
filing and emerging from bankruptcy before finally merging with Winn-Dixie to become Southeastern Grocers. By 2021, the buy low name had been phased out completely. Food Fair was founded by Samuel Friedland as a store called Redding Giant Quality Price Cutter in Redding, Pennsylvania in the late 1920s. By the 1940s, the name was changed to Food Fair, and they grew to more than 250 locations by the mid-1950s. It was during the 1960s that the company purchased a small chain from Philadelphia that was called Best Markets. Best had a private label brand called Pantry's Pride, and Food Fair used the name when they opened a discount store in New Jersey. The store became so popular, eventually all food fairs were converted to Pantry Pride. Unfortunately, financial problems led to a bankruptcy filing in the late 1970s, and from there it was downhill. The chain was bought and sold over the next decade, and by the end of the 1980s, there were only a few Pantry Pride locations remaining in Florida. By 1993, all of them were closed. Big Bear stores were founded in 1933 by Wayne Brown, and the very first one opened in Columbus, Ohio. Additional stores opened over the next few years, and the company was actually the very first to introduce a motorized conveyor belt at checkout. They grew to become a major grocery chain throughout Ohio and West Virginia, but they would experience competitive hardships starting in the 1980s, which led them to experiment with superstore concepts, combining groceries with general merchandise in a store called Big Bear Plus. In 1988, the company was auctioned off, and an attempt to save the company was put into place. Overhead costs were reduced, and employees were cut back. In-store conditions declined drastically, and customers took notice. The chain never did recover, and they began to have problems paying suppliers. By 2004, it was all over, and the last Big Bear store closed. Farmer Jack was a chain of grocery stores that began in 1966 in Detroit, Michigan. Brothers Tom and Al Borman had extensive experience running grocery stores and had been doing it since the 1920s. They opened three new suburban shopping centers that contained a new grocery store that they called Farmer Jack. The store was a favorite of shoppers and soon spread all across southeastern Michigan. In an attempt to go nationwide, Farmer Jack acquired 60 Safeway locations in Utah and southern Idaho in 1987. Within a year, they realized it wasn't working, and they sold them to Albertsons. Back in Michigan around the same time, a cashier's strike cost the company millions, and it was the beginning of the end for Farmer Jack. The last couple years of the 1980s ended with losses. The 79 Michigan stores were sold to A&P, with many of the Detroit-area A&P stores converting over to Farmer Jack. The division ended up being profitable for A&P, and the 1990s was good for business, but as the company entered the new millennium, they failed to acknowledge competitors with lower prices like Kroger. They tried new concepts and also expanded outside of the Detroit area, but the writing was on the wall and stores began to close. Slowly, the number dwindled, and by 2007, the last location closed its doors. Bohax began all the way back in 1887, and it started with one store in Brooklyn, New York. From there, Henry Bohack opened stores all across New York City and Long Island. He also tried his hand at gas stations and restaurants, but the Great Depression put an end to those ventures. Henry Bohack then died in 1931, and his family and nephews began running the operation, which included nearly 750 locations. By the late 1960s, the Bohack family took the company public and then turned it over to Gulf and Western Industries. The stores were part of the fabric of New York City, yet Gulf and Western pushed to expand outside the city, which proved to be fatal during the recession of the 1970s. Multiple bankruptcies would lead to all of the stores closing for good in 1977. Officially founded in 1859, Schwegman Brothers Giant Supermarkets was an offshoot that was built in 1946 by John Schwegman, who grew up in the grocery store business. The store served the New Orleans, Louisiana area, and throughout the 1950s and 1960s, they opened more and more locations. Schwegman was intent on being a local chain, and he was very loyal to Southeast Louisiana. Throughout the years of operation, there would be 18 locations spread across New Orleans. The stores were forerunners of the big box concept, and their legacy is remembered fondly. But during the 1990s, a bad acquisition left the company strapped for cash, and would lead to the chain being sold. 
They only lasted a few more years before they filed for bankruptcy and closed altogether in 1999. First national stores were popular in the Northeast and can be traced back to the 1800s. The First National, or Finest as it was called, operated decades from their headquarters in Somerset, Massachusetts. But in 1978, they were bought by the grocery chain Pick and Pay and the New England operations moved to Connecticut. A decade later, the Dutch parent company of Bilo bought First National and began converting stores over to stop and shops. Some First National stores were still around up until the early 1990s, with the final stores closing in 1993. Eagle Food Centers were popular grocery stores located across Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. The chain was born in the Quad Cities and went through mergers and acquisitions that saw its name change many times, with many variations including the name Eagle. At its peak, there were over 130 locations. In 1989, the company was taken public, and a few years after that, their CEO, Pat Petiti, retired after a 35-year career with the company. Shortly after, Eagle began to have problems, and in 1999, they reported a net loss of $1.5 million. Increased competition was blamed for the poor performance, and stores began to close. By 2003, Eagle ceased all operations and closed the remaining stores. The Eagle name still lives on, though, in a couple Eagle Country Market stores located in eastern Iowa. Pathmark had been one of the top grocery store chains in the Northeast from the 1970s through the 2000s. They were formed in New Jersey during the 1960s, after a group of grocers broke away from their parent company, Wakefern Foods, which owned ShopRite. In 1969, there were 81 Pathmark locations, and business was very good. By the early 1980s, they had become the 10th largest supermarket chain with sales of nearly $3 billion. This was the era of the Supercenter, and Pathmark began to explore larger and larger stores, which led to substantial debt. As they entered the 1990s, the company was looking for a buyer, but it would take until 2007 for a and to purchase the company. a and tried new concepts to re-energize the brand, but they were struggling to manage their own debt. By 2015, they had filed for bankruptcy twice, and it would be the end for Pathmark. In recent years, the Pathmark name has made somewhat of a comeback. The naming rights were purchased and one Pathmark store has reopened in Brooklyn, New York, giving the chain a bit of hope. Red Owl was started as a coal company that had ties to General Mills in 1922. The first grocery store opened in Rochester, Minnesota, and they sold groceries, dry goods, and coal. The chain expanded across the Midwest, eventually totaling more than 400 locations. These stores were small, but were known for having a lot to choose from. The small store became part of Minnesota culture, and was even featured in the opening sequence to the Mary Tyler Moore Show. After the chain was sold in 1988 to wholesaler Super Value, the Red Owl name was eventually phased out, with the exception of one franchise that still operates in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Cash and Carry was started in 1947 in Plant City, Florida, and was originally named Big Barn. After opening additional Central Florida locations, the grocery chain officially became Cash and Carry in 1960. After being sold to the California-based Lucky Stores in 1979, it led to a series of sales that would end with bankruptcy in 1994. The following year, Food Lion owned what was left of Cash and Carry and the company decided to end the brand entirely and convert to a new name, which was Sweet Bay Supermarket. All cash and carries were redesigned into Sweet Bays by 2007, but they couldn't withstand the pressure from Publix and discount stores like Walmart. In 2013, Sweet Bay was sold, and many locations were converted into Winn-Dixie's. Furs Supermarkets began in West Texas, and it was a family affair. The Fur Brothers expanded the company into New Mexico, and by the 1970s, they had built it up to 140 grocery stores and a chain of restaurants called Furs Cafeteria. In 1979, after overextending the business, Furs filed for bankruptcy and the company was split up. The grocery chain was sold to a German company, and the restaurant business was bought by Kmart. Furs still remained one of the primary grocery stores around Texas and New Mexico, but they never could secure enough investment to grow larger. By 2001, they were filing for bankruptcy and liquidating all properties shortly thereafter.
Recollection Road and Legacy Box both believe it's important to preserve the past. If you're like me, there's a box of your family's treasured home movies and photos tucked away somewhere, and Legacy Box can help you preserve them digitally. The process is a simple and safe solution for converting your home movies and photos to thumb drive or to the cloud. Just send in your Legacy Box filled with old VHS and camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and kept organized. It's that easy. Legacy Box is trusted by over 1 million people, and it's all done right here in the USA. Get started preserving your past today. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to get an incredible 55% off. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in your memories when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching the other videos in this series. While you're at it, hit subscribe and share Recollection Road with someone you know. As always, thank you so much for watching.